Are you ready for another starship to soar through the Texan skies? Well, fasten your seatbelt because in the best case scenario, another historic starship mission is just under two weeks away. After a notable rehearsal earlier this week where SpaceX rigorously tested nearly all pre-flight systems for the Starship rocket, it appears that significant progress may be underway for the eagerly anticipated Starship flight. The tempo surrounding the Starship launch has notably accelerated, particularly in the wake of a Coast Guard advisory to Mariners, cautioning them about a potential rocket launch in Boca Chica, Texas, slated for the first week of November. While this notice on its own is not a guaranteed indicator of a test timeline, SpaceX followed up with its test on Tuesday, and now a placeholder by NASA and an updated Coast Guard notice indicate that SpaceX plans to conduct the test soon, as they join a visit by the Forest and Wildlife Service made to the Starship launch pad yesterday. But what really gave it away was that NASA booked an eight-day placeholder for the WB-57 imaging aircraft. Remember, before the first Starship test flight in April, a couple of key indicators hinted that perhaps a launch was on the horizon. One of these was a NASA placeholder for its WB-57 airplane, which is a special NASA aircraft that allows it to conduct high-altitude reconnaissance flights with several features such as infrared imaging. NASA uses the plane regularly to monitor crew returns on the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft. And it also released high-definition footage of the Starship April test flight earlier this year after an FO IA request. Building on this, the Coast Guard's latest notice to Mariners features an updated time frame for launch activities from Boca Chica, Texas. Like the NASA placeholder, this notice also does not explicitly mention a SpaceX rocket launch, but the fact that SpaceX is the only company that launches rockets from the site, there is little doubt about tentative timelines being set for the second Starship test flight behind the scenes. Like the previous notice, the latest update from the Coast Guard is clear to warn Mariners about hazards from rocket launching activity that can include free-falling debris and or descending vehicles or vehicle components under various means of control. It also adds that placeholders will remain in place for every day starting from November 1st until conditions permit for a launch. These hazards should be in place starting from November 6th, according to the Coast Guard. Furthermore, following SpaceX's recent completion of Starship tanking and testing on the launch pad, including the much-anticipated water deluge system trial, Representatives from the FWS made an early morning visit to the site. It appears that the latest water deluge test was well planned, with some system tanks having been filled earlier. It's highly conceivable that SpaceX and the FWS are collaborating to assess the impact on the surrounding area after conducting multiple water deluge tests. Based on information available to the public, it becomes evident that the water deluge system has presented the most significant challenge for the upcoming second Starship orbital test flight. Despite this challenge, SpaceX has made rapid progress in reconstructing the launch pad and implementing the water system, all within months of the April test attempt. While awaiting FAA clearance, SpaceX is also already engaged in ground testing of another Starship second stage prototype as part of its partnership with NASA for the development of a lunar landing system. Starship is the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built, and both of its stages are designed to be fully and rapidly reusable. SpaceX believes that the vehicle will revolutionize spaceflight, making a variety of bold exploration feats, including the human settlement of Mars, a long-held dream of Musk's economically feasible. It's, it's a shame when our hardware is ready to fly and we're not able to go fly because of regulations or re-review. Bill Gerstenmayer, the vice president of Build and Flight Reliability at SpaceX, said last week during a hearing of the U.S. Senate's Subcommittee on Space and Science called Promoting Safety, Innovation, and Competitiveness in U.S. Commercial Human Space Activities. We need to be safe. We need to protect the environment. We don't dismiss those, but we need to fly at the fastest pace that we can do hardware development to do this, this active development process and this test flight experience that we've described. Referring to SpaceX's development strategy of flying prototypes frequently and iterating frequently based on the results. In short, we are all in for an exciting treat. In another part of the industry, Rocket Lab is also preparing to return its Electron rocket to flight before the end of the year as it completes an investigation into a launch failure in September. In an October 25th statement, the company said it received authorization from the Federal Aviation Administration to resume launches under its existing launch license from Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand. Those launches have been on hold since the failure of the most recent Electron launch on September 19th. 
In that launch, the engine in the upper stage appeared to shut down moments after ignition based on telemetry displayed during the launch webcast. The failure resulted in the loss of a Capella Space Synthetic Aperture Radar Imaging Satellite. The authorization from the FAA does not mean the investigation is complete. Rocket Lab said in the statement that it was completing a meticulous review into the root cause of the failure. That review, the company said, should be done in the coming weeks, allowing electron launches to resume before the end of the year. The announcement did not disclose any details about what might have caused the failure beyond stating that the rocket's first stage performed as expected and did not contribute to the anomaly. The company has said little about the failure since the accident. In an October 4th interview, Adam Space, Rocket Lab's chief financial officer, said only that the investigation was in its early days and that the company expected a return to flight of electrons similar to two previous failures in July of 2020 and May of 2021. In the announcement, Rocket Lab suggested that a complex chain of events contributed to the failure. After more than 40 launches, Electron is a proven, mature design with a well-established manufacturing process behind it. So we knew the fault was going to be something complex and extremely rare that hasn't been presented in testing or flight before, Peter Beck, chief executive of Rocket Lab, said in the statement. And for our last bit of news, two Russian spacewalkers floated outside the International Space Station Wednesday and isolated a leaking radiator as planned, apparently causing residual coolant still trapped inside to make its way Way to the leak site and spew out into space. Oleg Kononenko came so close to the growing blob or droplet as the pooling ammonia was described that one of his tethers became contaminated, necessitating it being bagged and left outside of the space station when the spacewalk ended. In the meantime, Kononenko and crewmate Nikolai Chubb pressed ahead with work to attach a small synthetic aperture radar antenna to the hull of the Nauka module. One of its four panels failed to fully deploy and lock in place place, and officials said adjustments would be made in a future spacewalk. Finally, Kononenko and Chubb released a small student-built nanosatellite, but the solar sail propulsion system it was designed to test failed to deploy. After making a final attempt to coax the bulky radar panel into place, the cosmonauts called it a day. The radiator's installation went normally, and valves were opened to route coolant from Nauka into its unfolded panels. But on October 9th, flight controllers noted flakes streaming from the area of the radiator. The flakes turned out to be frozen coolant that was spewing overboard. Kononenko Nenko reported numerous black spots on one radiator panel, and after the valves used to isolate the radiator from as coolant lines were adjusted, droplets of coolant could be seen leaking from a line connecting two radiator panels. The droplets combined to form a fairly large bubble around the leaking coolant line. Kononenko said the bubble was too large to sop up with the towel he had planned to use. Instead, the cosmonaut simply left it as is, while engineers on the ground began considering possible courses of action. What might have ruptured the coolant line in the first place was not even immediately known. It was the third coolant leak in less than a year for the Russians, starting with a massive rupture that disabled a Soyuz crew ferry ship last December. A similar leak developed on an unpiloted Progress cargo carrier earlier this year. The presumed cause of the Soyuz leak was a micrometeoroid impact. The Russians have not addressed the possible cause of the Progress leak or the one affecting the Nauka radiator, but it seems extremely unlikely micrometeoroids could have caused three such incidents in similar systems. Well, folks, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.